probably cost you about 250 quick. For a £10 phone? Yeah. Shit. It's money than our phone or something like that, it'd be about a thousand pounds. She's the risk of getting caught. So, where are you at the minute? I'm doing a tent stretch. You're on a mobile phone from the prison cell? Yeah. There's a thriving black market operating in Britain's prisons with a record number of contraband being smuggled in every day. Controlled drug, firearm, offensive weapon, alcohol mobile telephone. Got tobacco money, computer equipment, maximum penalty, two years imprisonment. But I know these things are getting in there. I know they are. I want to know who's doing it, why they're doing it, and ultimately, more importantly, how they're doing it. So I'm about to go and meet with a drug dealer, uh, a regular drug dealer, but apparently he knows all too well and is the source of drugs that are getting into prison. Um, so I'm going to go and meet with him and find out how his drugs, street drugs, are getting into prison. What do you do that for? I'm going to put a little platform for it. The glass is small. So how much do you reckon is there? Half ounce. Well, wow, what, all that's half ounce? Look how fluffy it is. I'm just going to chuck in extra for him as well. Why is that? I thought I could write him up. I'm feeling generous. I'm going to drop this thing now quickly. Yeah. This is for a guy to get into prison. Cool. Down the pants. Do you ever feel like um, responsible for it? Like, do you feel like you're a source of drugs that are getting into prison? Nah, everyone's doing it. Is there a big market in prison for drugs? Yes, big, big market. There's much more bigger stuff going on than me giving, you know what I mean, this guy a little ounce. Tell you the truth, they make more money in prison than on road. It's impossible to estimate the drugs market inside jails. Figures have suggested it to be worth more than £60 million. Yo, oh, I'm coming now. It's time for the dealer to make the drop off to the next link in the chain. I'm in a rush because I've got loads of things to do. What about car accidents? If I get into an accident, I'm putting it in first gear and I'm gone. We've got people high slow to drive. I okay. think he's going at the speed limit. Yeah, he's going at the speed limit, but I ain't got time to be going at the speed limit. We're not far now. Are you driving with your knees? Yes. I'm an experienced driver, you know. I'm properly worried. If we get stopped by police, we'd get more than just a speeding fine. We suddenly pull over. The drugs get handed through the window of a car. I managed to persuade the guy picking up, a networker, to let me come back and see him in a couple of days. I'm beginning to understand how the chain of smuggling works. A networker takes the order from inmates and sources the drugs on the outside before preparing the goods to go back in. What I want to know is how that order gets made from behind bars and how that market runs on the inside. The contact of a contact has finally come through for me. He's hooking me up with a guy who apparently has done some time and even more interestingly, he's actually uh, moved contraband into the prison. So hopefully I'll get some more insight straight from the horse's mouth. Well, the first time I went to prison was about 99 and I've been going to jail every, every year ever since. And what's your situation at the moment? Like, are you, are you a free guy at the moment? Or no, actually, I'm on, tag, about... I'm on tag at the moment. 
Who are you on tag for? I'm on tag for kidnap and having an offensive weapon. So I'm trying to find out about how contraband gets inside prison. What are the main things people are wanting to get on the inside? Drugs, mobile phones and knives. Knives? Yeah, obviously. You've got to protect yourself. And did, did you ever see any heroin or Yeah, cocaine? I've seen it all. I've seen it all. Spice, heroin, cocaine. I've been to Brixton and seen half a box of weed before. What does mobile phones, drugs, contraband do in, in that environment? Well, I've seen people literally get stabbed, hot water in his face, marked up for the rest of his life. For taking people's stuff or for people wanting their stuff. It's that simple. It's clear contraband is driving violence between inmates. Serious assaults in UK prisons have reached a 10-year high. Then if I think you're going to come rob me, I'm going to want a knife. So yeah, I'm going to get a knife brought in. And then yeah. you've got the guy who's got the gun, doesn't it? Just keep raising. Where does it stop? I don't know. It's turned right upside down in there. It's, it's, it's a mess. Tell me a little bit about the way, the methods you use to get things in. You have to either get your family to bring it in, people getting passes thrown over the wall, jump on a drone or pay someone to give you it. And I started out of my girlfriend was bringing it in for me. Sorry, bringing what in? Um, weed, cannabis. And then as I got older and my money got more, like, and I got nicked for more different things and I had money, I elevated myself to screws and just recently... So you elevated yourself to prison officers? Yeah, prison like, officers, so... but you've got to be careful because you've got to know which ones to chat to. How many prison officers do you think you've been through? I reckon about five, six myself. What did you get them to bring in for you? I got them to bring me mobile phones and spice. And then what about with the drones? When there's no weed on the wing and they hear the drone outside, the whole wing will be onto it because they know they're about to get fed. But how does the drone make sure it gets to the right person? What we used to do is, like, you'd have a light on your phone, so then when the, it's got a big, massive camera on it, so when the drone's outside your cell, you'd light something called flick a light. Do you understand? Or flick your light on and off, then the drone knows where to come. And do some inmates have, like, a, a network of people on the outside who facilitate the bringing drugs in? Definitely. You have to have a network or it's not going to work. This network couldn't operate without mobile phones. He offers to show me by calling one of his mates he says is on the inside. Yo, brother. Yo, hey. How did you get your mobile phone? Oh, I'm on a minute. What kind of thing do you use your phone for? Obviously, to contact the outside bills. Yeah, so because the prison phones, they record you on the phone when you, when yeah. you make a phone call. Yeah, and so what, I mean, what kind of conversations are you having? So I have more mobile phones, with it. Wow. Uh, so are you, make, are you making money while you're inside? Always. And, like, do you see a lot of drugs and phones in there? Loads. Loads. And my battery's going to run out, so I'm going to go, yeah? I can't believe that you just, like, just like that, you can ring someone who's serving a 10-year stretch. How could the prison system stop contraband getting in? Locking down the whole system. Spending money, more security, more cameras, more blockers. Do you understand? More things going on to stop these drugs from actually coming in, because if you fool someone to stop taking, if there's no drugs, they can't take it. They become clean. It's that simple. I think I'm most surprised that one is brutal honesty. But the level of the problem, I had no idea. I knew stuff was getting in, but I had no idea to that extent. The thing that doesn't surprise me, but I hadn't really thought about before, is that you send a drug dealer to prison, why would he stop being a drug dealer inside prison? I think that the life in prison for many of these guys, whether they like it or not, is now becoming an extension of the street. But actually, the value is much greater. This has opened my eyes to just how huge the problem is. A recent report estimates that over 20,000 kilos of drugs are smuggled into UK prisons every year. Weapons are as well, orchestrated through an illegal mobile phone, which is organised by a networker. I've had a call from the guy that picked up the drugs and I'm off to see him. When I arrive, he is prepping the goods, ready to drop off to a mule who will smuggle them into prison. Just imagine in this cell, it's like Christmas opening this up. Oh, my God. What a Santa Claus brung today. I smell that. That's the lemon. HMP finest, that is. 
So how does it work? Like, what, you get a call? They call me, put the order in, I locate the, the drug, I wrap it up and I drop it to the mule. And the mule will then take it to the prison. And then what happens with the mule? How do they get that in? Well, as you see, the way I, I wrap it up, and um, up the old back door. Yeah. And how often do you do this? Uh, me only about three times a week. But isn't that that's a lot of weed going in the prison, though, isn't it? Oh yeah, of course. Sometimes up two and a half ounces. And how long have you been doing it? Ten years. So for this one ounce here, how much do you get? I earn about hundred and fifty quid. I sell it as the four ounce in prison for eight hundred quid the ounce. Or they could break it down into deals in prison and earn up to 2,800 quid on the ounce. And so how, when will this be inside? This will be inside for the next two days. He's let me tag along to drop off to the mule. This is the final link in the chain before it gets into prison. You ever worked with any Ben prison officers? Yeah. A lot of the mules are screws. Can you tell me some examples of when you like use screws and mules? Uh, one time I dropped a, a, a screw, ten mobile phones, thirty flipping phone chips, and about two ounces of weed, and there was a um, bottle of rum as well. <laughs> So I would like to know how you got that in. Where are you going then? I'm just going to drop the thing off to the mule. I'm not allowed to see where he's making the drop off. He doesn't meet the mule but leaves the drugs in a specific location for pickup, which will happen in just a matter of minutes. My job's done. An ounce of weed is now making its way inside. The mule is an inmate on short release. He will insert the drugs, hope he doesn't get strip searched, then once back in his cell, remove them and hand them over to the prison dealer who made the order. I'm surprised that prison officers have been mentioned as a source of smuggling contraband inside. Hiya. Hello. I'm meeting a former prison officer to get her take on what goes on behind prison walls. Tell me a, bit, a little bit about yourself and your career. Well, I was a prison officer for a, quite, a, quite a number of years and uh, I absolutely adored being a prison officer. In your years uh, working in the prisons, did you see many mobile phones or SIM cards, that kind of thing, floating yeah. about? Yeah it's, um, yeah, it's quite normal. It's normal? It? Well, yeah. How big do you think the problem is? I think the problem is huge. Seizures of drugs and mobile phones in prisons have soared in recent years. In 2014, nearly 10,000 handsets or SIM cards and 6,000 drug packages were seized. What kind of thing did you find? The last two or three years, spice, the legal or illegal high, whatever you want to call it now, has become really prevalent for the simple reason that it doesn't show up on drug tests. If they take heroin or cannabis, that's going to show up. If um, someone's stashing drugs and stuff, where's the usual? Is there, I mean, is there a usual place? Not a usual, you yeah. know. Um, prisoners can come up with all sorts of ingenious things. They can take the TV apart, um, put it in the back, you might have it in the stereo, take the back off, hidden it in there. Oranges, take the middle out. Uh, I mean, I've even found, found a charger and a jacket potato. You know, so... And, I mean, how many were you talking? A lot, or...? Yes, yeah, a lot. Uh, you know, that's the ones we get. In the private sector, they've got targets. Say, if you have five mobile phones in a month and they find six, they get fined. So... Oh, so they, they get fined for doing a good job? Yes. Yes. That's Which doesn't bad. make sense. No. I'm keen to hear how she thinks contraband is getting inside. Where prisoners are let out on licence, they may well pack themselves full of drugs commit a crime to come back in to okay. sell the drugs. To come to prison to make money yes. rather than unfortunately yeah. get arrested and go to prison. Yeah. They're actually looking to go to prison. Yeah. Wow. Or they may be in debt with somebody in the prison. 
I want to talk about what I've heard about prison officers being used as mules. How do staff do it? I mean, don't they have to go through security as well? No. No? No. But so, so when you turn up for work in the morning, mm. you could have anything, you could have weapons on you, you could have guns, you could have... Yeah. And what, you could just walk in? Yeah. Wow. I don't know about Category A prisons, but um, it's certainly in the prison I worked in, which was a Cat B local prison. In the years that I was there, probably maybe three or four staff searches that I went through. Do you think people are vulnerable to corruption? A minority, I would, you know, majority, no, a minority. What was the toughest or most shocking thing that you experienced while you were working in prison? The last couple of years that I was working, the threats that I had towards myself got much worse. Wow. Fuck off your slag, fuck off your whore. I'm going to fucking find out where you live, or I know where you live. Watch your back. I mean, does have it, them ha potentially having a mobile phone make that a lot more of a threat? Yeah, absolutely. Some people are dangerous. And, yeah, they may well have a grudge with you, and they may well have somebody that they can connect up with to, to, to hurt you. And there'd be no trace of that, I guess, if it's all done over an illegal mobile phone? Yeah. 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 The network involved in getting contraband into prison is far more complex than I imagined. I think the willingness of people to take things in because they don't fear the consequences, I think that speaks volumes. As the technology gets better, the problem's going to get a whole lot worse. The whole environment in the prison system is going to change. It's becoming more violent because there's a whole currency in there, there's a whole black market. And whether you like it or not, there's going to be fallout from that. You could go to prison for something quite small and you could end up um, getting caught up in selling phones, taking drugs, all because of this uh, sort of dark economy that is created from the prison system. There will be a way to solve it, but it's going to cost a lot of money because it's got so bad. <laughs>